So def, too lazy to type this out. Ain't got time for that. All right. And I'll just write uh, send commands. So this, of course, like I said, is sending commands to the target machine. So while true, because this is just going to loop over and over again, because we don't want to just send one command and then the connection's over. We just want to keep looping this as a constant loop, and that way we have a constant connection and not just a one-time shebang. So the command is equal to input. All right. So what this right here does is it actually takes input from the terminal. So this is going to be our input. So whatever we type in, not the client at all. So whatever we type into a terminal, let me see, let me pull up this as an example. So if we type in like echo, hey, that's what CMD is going to be equal to. So what I wanna do now is just write if CMD is equal equal to quit, then I'll just write this so we know to end the connection. So C-O-N-N, and remember this got passed in from the other function, close. And then we can close the socket. And closing the socket just closes the, again, the conversation or the connection between the two computers. And then sys.exit. And again, this is a system command. So basically just like typing it into the command line. So that's what happens if we ever type quit. And now we just type length encode CMD is greater than zero. Then what do we want to do? Now, the reason here, let me explain this right here. So you see whenever I open the command line and I'm just typing in uh, like CS, or CLS, I'm just typing in like echo, hey, you're looking at this and you're like, all right, these are just plain old characters. So you must think that this right here is of type string. But whenever you run a system command, these characters are actually stored as type bytes. So that's why you're gonna see me um, encoding and decoding these back and forth. And what I'm doing is either converting it to a string or to bytes. So basically, whenever we just want to print it out for the user, it needs to be a string. And whenever we want to send it across the network, it needs to be bytes. And also coming from the command line or the process, it's going to be bytes. So now you know, there you go. So connection send. And by the way, what I'm going to do right here is what I'm checking for is just to make sure that um, the command is actually greater than zero characters. And I do this because if they just didn't type anything and hit enter, then we don't even need to bother sending it across the network. Only send it if there's some actual data there. So we'll say connection send. And what we need to do here is string encode CMD. So from here, what we do is we just sent this command, whatever we typed in, and again, this is gonna be something like CD or dir or whatever we wanna to do to the computer. And once we send it, we're gonna get back a response from the client. So the response we're gonna store in this variable right here, and we're actually gonna convert it to a string. So it's actually readable because remember, when it comes to us, it's gonna be in bytes. So we're just gonna convert it to a string. So connection, receive. I'll just write 1024, and this is just the buffer size of the data. And now UTF-8. So again, this is the response that we get in bytes, and I'm just gonna convert it to UTF-3, which is a basic um, character encoding for string, just a normal string. That's what I'm turning it into. And now we can just print it out. So client response and boom now the reason that here this is uh, kind of random but why didn't i just print it out like this right there well whenever we just print out the response what it's going to do is it's going to print it and then move your cursor to a new line however if we use end right here this says don't give us a new line character at the end why do i do that well check this out whenever i write like echo tuna what happens is 
this is going to be the response right here. This is going to be part of it. And my cursor occurs right after it. So my cursor doesn't get bumped down to a new line. And that way I can keep typing and it's pretty much going to resemble a command prompt. And well, there you go. So you guys are going to see the use of that later on. But yeah, we are rocking, we are rolling. And that it is, is actually it for send commands. So, oh, well, might as well just finish all this up now. So def main. And now all I have to do is actually just make a function to just call this and this and this. So basically everything we just did. So def main. And this is just the first one that's gonna run whenever we first start this program. And we're gonna create the socket. And then we're gonna bind the port. And then we're gonna accept the connection. And we don't have to call this last one because whenever connection is accepted, it automatically calls send commands so we can control that machine. So now if we just call main, then whenever we run this program, that is what's gonna start. Let me get rid of these lines and boom, there you go. So now we can actually run this right here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, okay, your server is now running, binding socket to port, tomato, tomato, and it's listening, waiting for connections. However, we don't have a client set up yet, so it's pretty useless right now. So in the next tutorial, that's what we're gonna do, create the program that's gonna go on the client's computer. It's gonna be awesome, see you then.